Hey guys, thanks for watching another video here at Quixel. My name is Galen, and today we're going to be talking about the new Megascans plugin inside of Unreal Engine. So here I am inside of Quixel Mixer, and I want to get this project now directly into the bridge. So I'll go ahead and export it to the library. I'm going to set a custom category as I want this to come in in a separate folder. I'm then going to verify all my export settings to make sure that I have all the necessary maps. I'm going to be using the 2K for this example, and I'll go ahead and click OK. So here I am inside of the bridge, and I'm going to go ahead and start installing the actual plugin now. I'm going to make sure Unreal is set as my target, and then I'm going to browse to my Epic Games folder on my hard drive. From here, you just have to select the version number, and for this case, I'm going to be using 4.19. I'll go ahead and check that, and then click Install. Once that's finished installing, let's go ahead and hop into Unreal. So right off the bat, when you load up Unreal, you're going to see the Megascans icon at the top of the UI. Let's go ahead and click that. Once I'm inside of here, you'll notice there are a lot of windows and drop downs and things. We're going to be featuring a lot of tutorials on the Quixel YouTube channel that goes into a lot of the features here, but today's just going to be a basic overview. I'm going to go ahead and click toggle to always on top and that does pretty much what you would expect. The next thing I'm going to do is actually bring in the mix that I had inside of Bridge. So we'll go ahead and export this material right out of Bridge now. So as you can see, all the settings carried over from my Mixer project. So all I need to do is then click Export. As you can see, Unreal is actually bringing in the files behind the scenes. So I'm back in Unreal, and what you can see from the start here is that Megascans has actually populated a couple folders filled with some files that we exported directly from the bridge. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the parameters that this instance offers right out of the box. As you can see, most of these parameters are a great jumping off point for any basic tweaks that you'll need to make for your shaders or for any of the materials that you bring in from the Megascans library. I'm going to go ahead and start making some basic tweaks to the displacement that I exported out of Mixer now. I want to actually leverage a little bit more control for how it will look inside of my scene here. So I'm going to be making some basic changes as far as the tessellation density, the normal intensity, and then just kind of seeing how it reacts to light once it's actually in the scene. It should also be noted that you can use the same plugin functionality for bringing assets from Bridge into Unreal if you're already using an existing master material setup inside of your Unreal project. I'm feeling pretty good about where this material is at right now, but I think I want to blend some additional materials from the Megascans library in. So let's jump back to Bridge. The look that I'm going for here is something that's obviously been burned down or destroyed by fire. So what I'm going to do is search Ash in Bridge, and I'm going to look to see the different types of materials that I can blend inside of my scene. It's incredibly simple to set this type of shader up using the Megascans plugin, so let's go ahead and export this from Bridge. As you can see, I've actually selected a couple different assets that I want to export, and so I'll go ahead and use the checkboxes, and then at the top of the UI inside of Bridge, I'll go ahead and mass export this group together. As you can see, I've added in some basic embers to the ground, and this just kind of adds a little bit more life to the scene. Now let's go ahead and make that blend material. All I'm going to do is select the two different materials that I want to blend between inside the content browser. Then I'll click the Create Material Blend button. This instance will actually go into the Blend Materials folder. After that, I'll just go ahead and rename this and then apply it to the ground. You can obviously customize this functionality as far as you would like. The only changes that I've made to this shader specifically for this example are obviously the embers as you can see on the ground. I made sure to set it as a static switch as this is applying to the master material. So what I want is to be able to toggle on a per asset basis whether or not embers actually show up. So I'm going back through the instance now and just trying to replicate the look that I had actually achieved in the original shader that I had set up. There's just a couple basic things in here that I want to tweak before I start actually painting in some of the variation on the ground. As you can see, if I scroll down to the very bottom of this now, I'm actually able to look at some of the different ways that these textures and materials blend between each other. 
We're going to be constructing only one example here in this specific tutorial, and that's going to be the vertex blend. So let's go ahead and start painting some of those into the background elements of my scene. I'm not really looking for this aspect of the blend to necessarily be featured in a very prominent way. It's mostly a great way to break up the ground as you get further away from the camera. I'm just going to start messing around with some of the basic parameters inside this instance to maybe blend the additional material here in the background in a different way. Sometimes making a simple change like just affecting the albedo intensity or slightly raising the gloss is something that will give you a completely different blend from what you were looking at before. Let's go ahead and start sprinkling in some scatter assets. So I'm going to type in rubble once I'm back inside of bridge and I'm going to download a couple different pieces here that I think will be really nice for the scene. I'm going to be downloading LOD2 as I don't really need to have something incredibly high fidelity for this sketch. There's actually a feature here inside of bridge that will allow you to export on click. All you need to do to activate this in download settings is to check the box at the bottom left side of the UI. It's as simple as control clicking to go back through and start affecting download settings for a different asset later on. Now what this has done for us is that it has actually populated our foliage painter with these actors directly on export. If I load up the foliage painter inside of Unreal, what I'll see here is that all of the actors have actually been set as actors that can be painted onto the floor. I'm going through and making some basic changes to the settings inside of the foliage painter as I'm looking to have these actors integrate with the ground in a very unique way. I like to change the size of the actual assets from max and min so that I can get a little bit of variation as I'm making strokes on the surface. There really isn't too much to the technique here at all. I'm mostly adding actors and then subtracting with the brush. You'll likely have to try out a couple different settings before you start laying down final strokes as far as the number of assets you want to draw into the scene, the types of assets you want rotated and whatnot. I affected some Z offset as well as we've also been displacing the surface. I've gone ahead and switched to my main camera view here as well so I can start to see the way the shot is developing as I'm starting to sprinkle these assets into the background and foreground. Let's jump back into bridge as we now need to find some actors that will really start to break up this surface and fill out the scene a little bit more. I'm looking to add some fallen trees, maybe just some branches and twigs that I can sprinkle across the surface. I also want to bring in a couple assets that will probably break up the lighting a little bit. I'm going to be doing some basic material changes to these as well as I obviously don't want moss to be on these assets when I bring them in. For this, the only thing I'm going to be doing is constructing an up vector blend, and that's the same process as going through to create the blend that we did before. The main difference being here that we'll actually be able to leverage one of the toggles inside of the instance that will allow us to blend across world alignment. This means that whenever we rotate the element, it will actually live update in the scene to always be facing up with the direct blend that we decided to choose. That's pretty much a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Quixel Mixer, The Bridge, and our Unreal 4 integration with Megascans is all available right now. I hope you were able to learn something from this video, and we'll see you next time.